Hey guys, this is Blake from Blake Sanctum, Retro Site for Retro Games. Welcome to a special bonus episode in my website and video series covering classic civilization genre games like Colonization, Master of Magic, Test of Time, Alpha Centauri, Call to Power, and of course the Civ series itself. In these bonus videos, I'll be touring some of the awesome fan games and my favorite scenarios and mods for all these games, as well as my own personal mods, while also trying to sneakily play as the Barbarians via hacks or cheats. In my main series, I show you how to play these great old games in HD using either special versions, tricks or mods. Check out the playlist link up top or in the video description and comments below to see the other episodes. Hey guys, this is the first episode in a special extra series I'm doing relating to civilization on how to play as the barbarians, whether it be via uh, hex editing, hacks or a, or a mod package or an in-game option. Basically, I'm going to look at every civilization game one by one and attempt to play as the barbarians and uh, attempt to win as, if, if it's possible. And before I get into how to do all that and set it all up, uh, for those of you looking at this going, hang on, how the hell is he playing Civ 1 in HD right now? Um, what I'm doing is, this is actually the Windows version of Civilization, um, made way back in the days of uh, Windows 3.11. Uh, I'm currently running it on a virtual machine and I'm using a soundtrack overhaul mod that I made and also a DOS graphics overhaul mod made by um, Honza that uh, combined give you a really brilliant classic Civ experience but in HD. So if you want to see how I did all that, um, that's all in a different video um, where I've gone through uh, how I set it all up and uh, what the mods do and I show off uh, some of the cool changes. Um, that uh, Go check out the vid in the link above and also I'll put it on the end card as well and in the video description. Now if you're a Civ DOS player then don't worry um, I will be showing you how you can play as the Barbarians in that. In fact most of what I'll be showing you will be in that but then if you're a Civilization Windows player I'll be showing you um, editors and how to convert save games from the DOS version, all that fun stuff so that um, you can do what I'm doing here and play a Barbarian game in HD. But before all that I'll be going through the advantages and disadvantages and sharing a few tricks I've learned when playing as the Barbarians. So if you want to skip ahead to any of these parts I've mentioned then I'll be putting time skip links in the video description below. Now firstly, regular Civ 1 players will know that music only plays when events occur, and my soundtrack overhaul mod merely upgrades the quality of those event tracks. However, for this video I'm going to play the awesome high quality Roland MT32 tracks that I used for my mod in the background. So let's get started on what it is like to play as the Barbarians. So I may as well start with all the bad news. <laughs> now, Barbarians cannot make any money. So uh, I've just set it to max luxuries because there's, they cannot make any money whatsoever. So should you use an editor to give yourself a few buildings, you're going to be losing money every turn. So you need to make sure you give yourself some starting money to compensate for that because you can't make money uh, doing... You can't like you don't. You, it'll say you've got money for capturing cities, but you don't actually get anything. It'll say you're making money per turn um, if you've got tax up, but you won't make anything. So you cannot make money. The pretty much the only way is to set one of your cities to c continuously build uh, a building and then sell it, and you just keep doing that, and that's the only way to make money. Now, there's, as you probably already guessed, there's also no science. You basically just do not, the, the barbarians do not get any text. I've used an editor to give them text, like I tried to give them bridge building and railroads and things like that, and nah. As soon as I started the game, it's all gone, you can't use it, and uh, and you can't accumulate any um, uh, beakers or uh, they, bulbs to get um, text. So uh, once again, you may as well just put them to zero and max out the luxuries. And, uh, and of course, you know, the problem is there's, even that doesn't really do anything because barbarian cities actually don't riot. I mean, look at this. This should be, city should be rioting, yet it is not. Um, but there's another down, so that, that's a, actually a positive that your cities don't riot, but it's also a negative in that 
if the flag is not changing, that can also punish you when you first take a city. If you take a city, it's set to the riot mode and doesn't matter what you do, they will not go off it. You need an editor or a hex editor to fix that. And uh, usually in most cases, I just uh, destroyed the city and rebuilt it using a settler um, with the same name so, uh, so I could at least, you know, be reminded of the victory I had over the city that was there originally. <laughs> but, uh, you know, using an editor, you just get it to buy a settler at size one and bang, uh, and you just replant the city and it's, uh, it's like it was never lost. <laughs> but uh, obviously the ones with wonders, I couldn't do that. I suppose actually even with an editor, I could have actually gone and done that. I could have rebuilt the city and then filled it with the same wonders, but I don't know. God, that just seems like I'm just playing God a bit too much. But what else? Uh, barbarian units, most of them will auto pillage squares. Very bad. Especially because that includes settlers. They will auto pillage. But the, the good news is though that they don't pillage roads or railroad, but they will only pillage irrigation and mines. So that's why you'll notice I'm just sort of building roads and not irrigating anywhere. There is a way around that though. How did I irrigate these squares? I didn't use an editor. What I did was I sent the settler there, told him to irrigate, and because the pillaging happens when the settler moves off the square, or attempts to, uh, that means you can get him to do the job and then disband them. Uh, so basically, all, your settlers you're building are like one-hit wonders, so it's a pretty expensive endeavor, but as you can see, it was worth it to, to irrigate the, uh, the desert um, oasis squares that uh, I put there to... Uh, to help my cities uh, have at least some um, advantage. Uh, what else uh, is horrible about them? Um, oh yeah, so you can't change uh, the build queue stuff. You can't change what they're producing. Um, if you hit the change button in DOS, it will automatically switch to building a legion and, uh, and then there's nothing you can do. Hitting change does nothing. If you hit change here, and well, there isn't really a change button, but if you click where it says library, which is to initiate change, here in the Windows version, it will do the same thing. It'll switch it to a legion. However, it will then crash the game. So do not click here if you're playing the Windows version. Well, I mean, save and then click there if you want to see what happens, but um, it will crash. Um, and what else? Uh, oh, yes. So... The, one of the biggest problems of all is that the AIs, if they are down to their last city, then the units in that city become invulnerable. They cannot be killed. You can put in like a whole bunch of artillery and tanks against a militia and they, all those tanks will lose. They cannot defeat. It is invulnerable. It's because it's just, I guess it's to stop players being killed by a barbarian uprising spoiling the game I guess they put in some kind of security so you need to wait for the computer to build a second city so if you guys decide to play a barbarian game on earth either don't play with the English or connect France to the UK otherwise the English will sit there for the whole game never bloody building a boat and you'll never be able to finish your game because you can drop all the troops in the world in the UK and you will not be able to bring down London because it is their only city now once they have two cities that, no more invulnerable units, which is good. Um, well, unless you destroy one city and then they're back down to one again. So, what you've got to do is you've got two options. One, you can either, there's the, milit the full military way, which is to attack both cities at the same time with two separate forces. And um, once both are empty, both, you can then march into both of them and take them, and that'll destroy the sieve. Or, you basically, once they've got two cities, you attack their capital, because that's the harder one. You, you, you take that city, and then you use a diplomat to buy the secondary city. That's the other option. Barbarians will get lots of barbarian leaders, which are diplomat units, and you get the full diplomatic options. So you can send in the diplomats and buy the city. Um, that, and the reason you have to do it that way around is because diplomats cannot bribe capital. So you, the capital is the one you have to attack. And that leads to the final issue. So even when the invulnerability is gone, capitals have ginormous defense bonuses. And I will demonstrate for you here. So we'll attack. Du -du. These are catapults attacking militias, and there's no city walls. And see, I've got that victory there. In fact, I've had a little bit more success in the Windows version, which surprises me. I would lose like hundreds of friggin' times um, in, 
in the DOS version. Do do. Oh no, there we go. There's some more losing. Amazing. That has gone way better than usual. It's because I'm doing a video. That's why. <laughs> Normally you lose all the time. Um, but uh, and I suspect for some reason it seems to be a little bit nicer in the Windows version. So keep that in uh, in mind, guys. If you're going to play a barbarian game, it might be better to do it in the Windows version than the DOS version because. This battle in particular, I was reloading, like, I must have reloaded it, like, 20 freaking times, because I was just, the entire attack force, like, all the chariots, all the catapults would die. Um, because, yeah, the defensive bonuses are insane, and if they have a city wall, you are really screwed. So, uh, that's where the catapults come in, because originally, you know, I got inspiration from another player, because I'd been wanting to do a barbarian game for ages, and I saw that someone else did on the Sif Fanatics forums, and he was... Uh, he just let the cities sit on their default build legions option, and so he built hundreds of the le uh, legions. Well, he hit the unit cap, which actually is a hundred, I think, and he just you know covered the map in legions, and he would lose like twenty or thirty of them just to take a city, you know. <laughs> and I don't, I don't have his patience, so I decided to go with chariots. But then I found that my chariots were dying all the time as well, so um, I'm going to actually release this as a scenario for people to play, for people who can't be bothered making their own and just want the an easy, fun way to play Barbarians, then I'll give you this map, which gets, gets you these starting cities, and then you, you have to build your army and expand out. Um, I'm going to change it from uh, to have catapults from the beginning, because I think catapults are absolutely essential. Um, once the computer has city walls, you will lose a lot of units to take those cities. So, uh, yeah. Now, what kind of positives are there? I've gone for all the negatives, so positives are you get lots of randomly spawning reinforcements, pirates on boats will appear, and they've usually got a, a diplomat barbarian leader as well, they'll pop up all around the, the earth, and also, um, like I said, you know, you can max out your luxuries, although that doesn't really, I mean, you can see lots of happy people, but it doesn't seem to change, uh, it doesn't make them celebrate, or, uh, or you don't have any rioting, it just doesn't seem to do anything. Um, <clears throat> Bob, now, if you're not going to use an editor to manipulate things and you want to play uh, El Natural, then it's quite difficult to uh, to get a game going. You you basically, uh, Barbarian Uprisings will destroy cities instead of capture them, so you're going to need uh, to wait for a pirate to land, because uh, Barbarian Legions will capture cities, so you need to basically offer up some of your starting Civ cities to, to, um, to pirates then switch over to Barbarians, because if you switch over before they have a city, it's instant death. Yeah, they have to have a city before you can play as them. And uh, once that's done, they will. Um, uh, you can then play as them and take over the rest of your starting Civ uh, uh, <clears throat> offerings, because uh, you, you, know, you just leave no one in the cities and uh, march in. And uh, it is a nifty trick where the Barbarians cities will build whatever they were left building by the AI race. I think when you're playing as the um, as one of the main civs and a barbarian takes a city, they will switch it to legions. But once you're in control of the barbarians, um, the, the basically the civ will uh, your your cities will build whatever the uh, the civ was building. So if you capture a city and they're building settlers or building a building, then that's a, quite a gift because you can keep selling that building for money. You can build settlers and use them to work the land. You know, it's quite quite some fun advantages, and that's the only way you'll be able to. Um, to get other units, um, you know, you have to pray that a city's building a catapult or a chariot and things like that. And it's possible, you just got to time it right. So maybe you'd use a diplomat to get intel on an enemy city to see what they're building and then strike at the right time. And uh, and then you can use that city to produce, uh, say, a catapult. Because there were, I remember the Aztecs were building truckloads of cap uh, catapults, so I could have naturally um, acquired catapults in the game, which would have been, um, you know, uh, which you know, would have been uh, yeah, fun, uh, but instead I just used an editor, and I'll take you through what editors that allow you to change city build cues and things like that. Um, what else can go wrong? Um, uh, I think I think that's pretty much all the disadvantages. I mean, all the advisors work, so that's pretty good. Um, there's no weird glitches there. Uh, military advisor, that's all fully functioning. Intelligence. Uh, no, oh, these are respawn civs, so I don't have embassies there. I could have established one with a diplomat, though, so you can spy on them. That works. Uh, the attitude, of course, we've already talked about how that goes. We can still look at it. We've already been here. Um, oops. 
Science advisor already been there. Uh, wonders of the world. Haha, <laughs> I have them all now. Uh, top five cities. Barbarian baby. So, yep, that works. Um, Sib score works. There, I'm King Attila of the Barbarians. I didn't set that name. You know, that's that. That is the built into the game. The king, king's name of the uh, Attila, the Hun of the uh, Barbarians. Um, and I'm, you know, I'd recommend playing an Emperor mode, but I'll get into that later as well because that makes the Barbarians uh, stronger. And it appears that bonus comes over when you take uh, take over them. Uh, what else? Well, map that still works, of course. Demographics doesn't quite work. You are, I think, pretty much all the time you are first in everything, even when you're not. <laughs> but uh, yes, yeah, so that doesn't quite work properly. But almost everything works. Uh, what other tricks? Um, Oh yeah, so like I said, you can't get bridge building. So if there's an annoying river in your way, uh, I, then I recommend you put the city right on the river because then you get an automatic bridge. And so, because uh, like I said, they you know no bridge building, so settlers cannot build roads over rivers. Like see there, I got stuffed there and I couldn't move um, the city because I didn't want to destroy it. Whereas when it, some of these other cities, I actually did move them by square occasionally just to put them in a better slot so I could build roads across rivers. So that's a trick to use. Um, another trick is also um, if you're playing a natural game. I mean, obviously I set this up in an editor, but um. If you're playing a natural game, say like this is your sacrificing sieve and you've given it to um, to barbarians, then I would recommend you before you do the switch, you get your sacrificial sieve to get some settlers out and build some fortresses on mountains, because you know you'll um, the AI will start you know if they get the edge on you, then they can probably demolish your city defences without too much trouble because you're not going to be able to build up your defence as much either. Um, you know, you won't be able to build city walls unless you put them in there with an editor, but if you're playing El Natural, you can't do that. <laughs> so, I'd recommend fortresses on mountains, then put, um, you know, whatever unit you can get into that fortress, and that'll give you a much better defensive bonus as a natural barbarian player. As an editor, you can find ways around. You can give yourself city walls, you can put your own mountains and fortresses down and get around that problem. So I think that's pretty much all the tricks. I mean, I guess the final tip that I'll give before getting into how to set up something like this is rush. You know, you need to build your army quickly and get out there because you might think that because you've got these lovely starting cities um, that, um, that you know, I, I've got building all this stuff for you and I've got good land around that you've somehow got an easy victory. You do not. Because of these ridiculous defense bonuses, you will lose units all the time. So you need to be constantly building. And, you know, you need to remember that as the Barbarians, you are effectively an eighth civilization, which means instead of playing six AIs, you're now playing seven AIs. So it's actually a bigger game than what you're used to in Civ 1. And because this is the early game, all those civs will respawn. So you're effectively up against not, you know, just seven other civs, but you're actually up against 14 other civs. And, you know, you need to rush before anyone gets gunpowder, because this is Emperor mode, and in Emperor mode, you know, they're, they're unleashing all the cheats. <laughs> you know, they're reeling in the techs and the wonders. So, you know, I moved in very quickly, and I managed to end this game by, what was it, 1120 BC? So, uh, you know, if I, if I say it had gone towards AD, uh, they would have got gunpowder. And once you've got a musketeer behind city walls, I think you'd be in serious trouble. Now, yes, the barbarians will start to spawn musketeers and cannons in the late game, but pretty much by the time they start doing that, um, the computer will get tanks. And once the computer's got tanks and an air force, you're done. You are done. You, surely you cannot win as the barbarians. Because, you know, there's no way a cannon is going to beat a, me a fortified mech imp in a city behind city walls. Like, it's just no chance. So, you have to win as the Barbarians. You have to play early. And, and you know, if just finally, before I go into how to do all this, um, you you can win. You know, I, I once I destroy these cities, I get a full ending sequence. It says, Attila the Hun, you have won. You know, it, it, not, it I was half expecting the game to crash. But, no, you get the full ending sequence. I mean, the only... Other thing that doesn't work with the ending is is spaceship. You can you using an editor. You can build all the spaceship parts and hit launch, but then nothing happens apparently. I haven't tested it, but I found out that apparently nothing happens and the spaceship just never goes and lands and yeah, just disappears. So 
you can't have a spaceship. But you can actually view your spaceship as the barbarians, which is kind of cool. And it's like all red and stuff um, around the, the borders and things. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> you have to use do military victory and you have to do it quickly. Those are the conditions of this uh, scenario. But I'll put all that in a readme when I release it. Alright, so let's get this party started. I'm starting up the DOS civilization right now. Um, to show you how to start a barbarian game. Now, if you're a Civ Win player, I still encourage you to watch this part because it's actually better off to start your game in the DOS version because J Civ Ed is a really advanced editor, way better than everything else, but it only works with the DOS version. However, if you don't have it, it's okay. I will show you after this how to um, how to do it as a Civ Win player only. But um, let's get this thing going. Um, we're going to need to customize a world to try and help our game because you're definitely better off as a barbarian player playing on a, uh, a large world uh, because you want all your enemy civ targets to be within striking range without the need for ships can get ships but you've got to wait for the uh, you know random pirates to appear for you to take control of them so I'd rather have as many sieves in striking range without the use of ships as possible so we'll go large and I mean none of this stuff probably really matters for the environment um, I mean if you make it in inhospitable it probably would mean that the the regular sibs, it's a lot harder for them to build up their lands, and obviously they can do it better than you as a barbarian, so it might be beneficial, but I'm going to leave it on temperate for my one. Same with this one. Might want to make it more desert-like or something to uh, try and hurt the other players. you just got to be careful, because the barbarians, you know, they'll be hurt too, and they'll be hurt more, probably, um, unless you decide to use an editor to give yourself some, uh, some benefits. On, at your uh, starting positions so, but I'll leave it on normal and um, maybe I'll make the world young I can't really exactly remember what kind of benefits that has though um, there we go okay now <clears throat> if you look online I think there's a page at Civ Fanatics that talks about how like but the maths calculations behind barbarian strengths and how basically at Chieftain level, the Barbarians are useless. They, they, they have a huge odds stacked against them ever winning any battles. Whereas on Emperor, the Barbarians are made very strong. Now, does that calculation still come into play if you switch control to the Barbarians? I'm not sure. And no one else was sure when I asked in the forums uh, either. But for the sake of, you know, removing any doubt, we'll, we'll stick it on Emperor. Um, because yes, the, your enemies are going to develop faster, but, you know, hopefully you get this nice, you know, you, you get a better chance of winning, whereas a Chieftain, you, you probably lose every battle as the Barbarians. But, you know, I'm not sure. If you reckon you know, feel free to comment on the video. So I'm going to go for uh, Emperor. Seven sieves. And it uh, doesn't really matter who we pick because we're going to be switching to the Barbarians. Um, I'll just go American. Not much point putting your name in there because, once again, you're not going to be playing as these guys pretty soon. Alright, so, now, you, uh, Civ 1 DOS does not let you save in turn 1, so you do have to get started. So, uh, we'll uh, build a city. Washington. Yeah. Alright. Geez, they got a nice uh, little bonus there to start with. Although in my test game a minute ago, they started between two rivers and I was like, damn, I'm almost tempted to make a serious game out of it. <laughs> so we save. And I'll just put it over the top there. As you can see, my earlier Barbarian stuff is still there. Alright, let's head into the editor. Okay guys, so this is Jay Cived, probably the best darn uh, Civ editor <coughs> in existence. And you can get it from um, the Civ Fanatics site, uh, Civilization Downloads area. Um, 
and probably a few other Civ sites, and I'll make sure I put links to all the programs I'm using here in the video description as well. And uh, download it, install it, and then all you got to do is tell it where Civ is. I've already done that, so it knows where it's installed on my computer, and I can see the save games. And here is that American game that we just made. So I click on that, open it, and voila, here's our game. And it's quite nice actually seeing it all in HD. It's sort of a, it's, a, it's almost like a preview of what it'll look like if you play it in Civwin uh, with the, all the mods installed. But uh, it's extremely customizable. And in case you're thinking, hang on a second, does this mean that Civ1 can support scenarios? Well, yeah, it can. Um, you can do whatever you want in this editor, just like in the future Civ games. And then all you have to do is save it as a save game, and then you distribute that save game. People can load the save game in their copy of Civ, and bang, they've got your scenarios. So I've seen people making all kinds of cool stuff. I think there's some like some Dune scenarios, and uh, and you know some Roman ones and stuff like that. You know, there's uh, there's a bit of a community still doing stuff at uh, Civ Fanatics. So uh, I cover a whole bunch of these scenarios in more detail in my main Civ One video. So uh, make sure you check that out to see more of these scenarios. Anyway, for our Barbarian game, we're going to need to do a few things. So, uh, we can do Show All Map and Show All Items. That will allow you to see the whole map and all the players. So, there's where we started. Now, it's still a little too broken up for my liking, so I think what we might do is just join up some of these continents. So, uh, you can use whatever terrain you want. I'll just put it on Grassland. And we'll uh, join. Now, I also encourage you guys, when you're doing this, to still leave a diagonal sea lane. That way, once you do have ships, they don't get trapped and you know can't get easily you know from one side of the world to the other. Um, you don't want to disadvantage yourself too much. So uh, let me see. We'll uh, leave a diagonal gap there. Ships can get through there. Uh, there. That looks pretty good, I reckon. And then, if you want, I mean, this, this it's pretty crowded. Almost every landmass pretty much has a sieve on it. So maybe we could use this area up here for our starting position and just build a nice little defensible bridge there that ships can cross and we can build some cities in if we want and don't you love it how it tells you where all the huts will be if um if you put land there that's pretty cool too geez look at all those shielded squares that's pretty good isn't it and let me see i think if we go here now there you go, if you want your city to grow, <laughs> do that. But you also may want to have some industry. So look at that, then you can really pump out units. It's up to you how much you know you want to gift yourself, because obviously the barbarians are very disadvantaged, so I in, in my mind I'm merely compensating for those disadvantages. And we're going to change to... Now, just to clarify, guys, this is not switching the player in the game to Barbarians. It is simply switching the editor view. To switch the player, you still have to do that elsewhere. So we can make our uh, city here if we want. Or we can just put a settler so you can do it yourself, I think. Although you might instantly die if you... Like, oh, God. It's been a while since I tested now, so I'm trying to remember. Maybe well, let's, let's play it safe and build a city. And look at that, let's you name it. We'll leave it as Mecca, but you can call it whatever you want. There you go, the barbarians have a starting city. We can give them a uh, phalanx if you want. Give them a catapult, you know, why not? <laughs> and you can do cool stuff to the land. Like, let me see, we could do like a gateway kind of thing here where you go. And put a fortress there, and then put a phalanx there, there you go. No one's getting in there for a while. 
So, you know, I'm not going to go any further, we'll just leave it like that, and, uh, you know, as you probably saw in the other save game, I went way more extensive. I gave myself a number of starting cities, each building individual productions, I edited the land a fair bit around them as well. It's really up to you how far you want to go with, with the editing, um, whether you just want to do a little bit with the editor here and then never touch another editor again, you just play vanilla and hope for the best, go hardcore, or you can kind of do what I did where um, you use an editor to give yourself a pretty darn good start and then you can occasionally use some city editing editors to, um, to sort of fix annoying problems. Um, to fix like build queue issues and, and riots and things and uh, um, or you can go all out and just basically use editors to completely edit your city queues all the time and, and give yourself technology and money and all that kind of stuff not that most of that will do much but you know it's up to you so we'll uh, I think we'll leave it here and what I'll do is I'll save over the top and then I'll show you the next stage, which is to change the player. Oh, I nearly forgot that we still need to fix the game view, because if I take it back to here, the barbarians can see nothing. So what we've got to do is we need to show some of the map here. That way you won't be seeing complete black darkness when you start the game. There we go. Okay, so... Now to switch the player. To do that, you gotta, we go to the data tab and then game data, and you can see all the primary game info. Now to change to barbarians, I believe you need to change two things. I'm not quite sure why there are two different areas, but you'll need to change both just to be safe. Here, it says player sieve, so you would untick that and tick Civ 0 and then change the Civ ID here to 0 as well. And that should do it. I'm now Barbarians. And I'm not really sure what the identity flag stuff is. You can make yourself space enabled. Although like I said before, yeah, the Barbarians, you know, you, you can build ship parts using cheats and launch a ship but then it disappears. Um, now you can edit your cities. So here's Mecca, which we just made, and look at this, you can change its size, you can give it buildings, you can, you know, tell what it's working off, you can change all of its flags, do lots of stuff with it. So um, there's some, you know, you can fully customise everything. Now the problem is, right, this would be perfect for later on when you're trying to stop those civil disorders I was talking about in captured cities, however, this is the big problem here guys, if you save this right now, you will never be able to load it in this editor again. Why? Because there's an annoying bug where if you switch the player to Barbarians, you can never load that save game in this editor again. I re I've reported the bug in the JSIF thread, but he's not really working on it anymore. So, fingers crossed, maybe one day he'll pick it up again and he'll see my bug report and he'll fix it. Because uh, if that bug didn't happen, you could just continue to solely use this editor to customize your game because you can set what it's what the city's building you can fix any flags or any issues in this screen but sadly because of the bug you're not going to be able to do that and i'm going to have to show you a different editor to try and uh, edit cities and fix problems with so what we're going to do is we're going to save this now as a different game so we'll go one yes and that should be ready to play in DOS Civ. Oh, and I nearly forgot. Uh, you also need to go into the Civilizations Barbarian Editor if you want to uh, do anything here. Because look at this, you can set your name if you want to something custom. You can um, switch the government, which is important because you cannot switch governments, you know, because you don't have the technologies to do it uh, as the barbarians by. Uh, using conventional means. So, uh, this is the place to do it. If you want to start the game in a monarchy, then at least you're set for the rest of the game. So you would set the government to two, set it to Blake, and I reckon that'll do it. I mean, now you can give yourself some stuff like, uh, uh, as I said before, you can't make money. You, you just cannot make money other than selling buildings, basically. So you probably 
you'd be very wise if you're planning on putting buildings in your cities to try and make your cities a bit better that are going to cost you money, you need to give yourself some gold, so we'll give ourselves a ton of it. <laughs> oh, no, it didn't like that number. Hang on. Uh, how about that? There you go, it likes that. Okay. Alright, so we're back in DOS Civ 1. We go to load save game. And voila! There it is. Blake of the Barbarians. Load that up. And there we go. Look at that. It's best to leave one of your units um, unfortified or without orders because then the camera will switch to where you've now started it because if you don't do that I think the camera will still be stuck where the Americans are um, for this first turn. Um, but we've now corrected that problem. And if we go to our advisors, you can see we're now King Blake, so we are in a monarchy. And, uh, and now we can get extra food off the good squares, so uh, we're now getting those nice monarchy benefits. And as I mentioned before, if you hit change, that's all that happens. See, you can't even bring up the menu, and it will just stick to legions. And if you try this in the Windows one, it will crash. So. That's where the next editor comes in handy. Now, if you're um, playing Civ 1 these days via DOSBox, then I definitely recommend you use the D-Fend Defend Front End. Uh, it makes things so much easier um, when playing DOS games because you can configure all kinds of stuff. And there's a handy trick you can use here because the editor I recommend for editing cities as you play, if you want to, is called um, CK CivEd 1.5. Once again, available from Civ Fanatics and other Civ sites, and I'll link to it. And what you can do is, normally with these old DOS games, a lot of them had their own setup files, so you can configure them to have the main game exe as the primary program file, and then a setup exe, because Civ doesn't have setup it runs a setup when you start the main game so this box is essentially free and not being used so what I did was I put the sieve editor into it so that way it's very easy to get into it at any point in time you can simply just you basically either double click to start the game or you right click and go run setup but instead of running the game setup it'll run your editor Okay, so for some reason it still says Attila there, but this is definitely our save game because you can see from the date and time it's the newest file. So we'll uh, load that up. And this editor is quite useful because you can change all sorts of things. You can go into the cities and there's our city, Mecca. So at any point in the game using this editor you can go and edit the buildings the city has. So I can give it uh, a uh, palace, barracks, if I want, and you can change the city size, make it 5, you can, and this is the critical one, change what it's building. So hit space, and we can change it to build any building or wonder, see, we can have a building city program for all I want, you know, care, you know, <laughs> um, but we're going to build it military unit, we'll get it building balances. And most of this other stuff doesn't really matter. Nah, I mean look at that, you didn't mess with this trade. But yeah, those are the critical things you'll want as a barbarian player if you wish to sort of play around with things throughout your game instead of just leaving it as it is. Now you can also, by hitting escape, go back out to the menu and also edit your units. Now let me see, uh, minus and plus to move to a different civilization. So if I go back one, there we go, there's the barbarians. So I can edit my phalanx that is sitting in the capital right now. I can change what type of a unit it is. I can make it a musketeer if I wanted to. I can change how many moves it has. I can change its home city. 
all kinds of stuff. So, you know, you've got some control here, even though you say you can't go back into Jay's Civ Ed, you've at least got this. The one thing missing that this editor can't do that I wish it could is removing the uh, riot flag from City, sadly. That's why I need the Jay Civ Ed guys to fix that bug, because uh, that's the one annoying thing. But nevertheless, it's pretty good. So we can go quit, save. Uh, we want to X, save and quit. Okay, so I've uh, reloaded the save game, and as you can see, that phalanx is now a musketeer. The city is now size 5, it's got a palace, it's got barracks, and it's building a phalanx. So as you can see, quite customizable. And like I said, riot flag doesn't change for better or for worse, so it doesn't matter how many angry people you get there, the city won't go into riot. It's just a problem when you take enemy cities that it gets stuck in a riot flag. So, yeah, um, that's all DOS players need to know about. Now, if you're a Civ Win player, let me show you the next stage because there's a quite a good, rarely known Civilization for Windows editor out there that can actually convert DOS save games into Windows save games. So let's go do that. All right, so I've hopped into my virtual machine uh, where I've got Windows XP installed uh, because classic Civ for Windows will not work modern operating system, so we'd either need an old computer with an old OS or a virtual machine. Um, and Civ Cracker will work, uh, I believe it's a 32-bit application, so at least the, uh, the Civilization for Windows map editor program will work um, anywhere you try it, but um, since Civ for Windows installed on my XP virtual machine uh, and only works there, then I've moved everything here, including the save game from the DOS game that we just made. So load it up and we'll load our save game which I've put in a shared folder and uh, we go to the make everything visible there we go there's our world but of course using the standard sit for windows graphics and uh, and icons so of course uh, I don't know, it almost looks like a, a ship but it's actually a catapult um, and now this editor can do almost everything that JSIV can do and it can actually do quite a few more things too. It's amazing that it's so rarely known. So um, uh, once again though, I've actually put it into the downloads area of Civ uh, Fanatics. You can get it there and I'll put a link to it as well so people can get this. And you can do most of the things you could do on the other one, like you can edit the city set what it's building and I've actually noticed you can even change the civil unrest and celebration stuff and you could actually use this editor to remove the riot um, state on cities you capture so that's actually quite handy but uh, anyway um, so you can change what's building mess around with the city options you can uh, edit the unit do the similar things to, that we could do with the other editor and you can do all kinds of crazy stuff you can um, obviously edit civilizations. Now, sadly, I've not found an option to switch the human control player. Because if we could do that, then you wouldn't need any of the other editors. You could just use this for everything. But sadly, if so if you're a Civ Win user and you don't have the DOS Civ and you need to change the Civ, you're probably going to have to use a hex editor unless there's an option here somewhere. I have failed to find it if there is one, so I'm sorry if there is one. If you guys find one, or you know of one, put it in the comments, please. Because um, I'm yet to find a way to, to change who the human player controls. But considering how much you could do in this editor, it really wouldn't surprise me if it's in there somewhere. Like, I looked in game options and I just... Yeah. I can't see anything for changing the controlled player. But Anyway, um... So yeah, you can fully edit all sorts of stuff, but then there's all kinds of crazy stuff like, look at that, you can wipe all barbarians from the game, you can um, put roads everywhere, look at that, crazy, and uh, clear all roads, and that gets rid of the ones we made as well, but um, uh, railroads everywhere if you want, you can mess around with, like, you can change it to crazy, like, water world, land worlds, uh, you can irrigate all the plains and grasslands, on the continent, although some, somehow it thinks that this continent is the same as that one for some reason. I'm not sure why. Um, you can mine things, hills and mountains. Look at that. And 
And of course you can do stuff with the city. If you had the city selected, you can... Actually, it might just do it across the planet. Ha! <laughs> That's interesting. No. Um, and you can also... Obviously just mess around with what's displayed. So, anyway, let's get on to what makes this so good. I'll go save as, but it's already done it anyway. Yeah. Because there's no option to save it as Sifidos. That's a real pity. Um, alright. But it's a great that you can, yeah, use it as a converter to convert it into Civ for Windows games. So all that stuff we did in the DOS version, the DOS editors, now is carried across into Civ Win. Alright, so we're hopping back into the Windows Civilization. And I've taken the save game from the editor and put it into the Civ Win directory. There it is. And here we go. Ooh. So that I just forgot, I forgot about that. So when you do reveal all in the editor, it's actually revealing it in the game too. My bad. So yeah, maybe don't do that when you're using the editor. Sorry, I'm a bit rusty with that editor. I'm not as good with that one because of course I've only just discovered it. But um, anyway, as you can see, we're, uh, we've got our city mecha, all the changes we recently made. Except now we're in uh, Civilization for Windows. Viewing our Barbarian game in HD. <laughs> wow. That's crazy what that editor can do. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this How to Play Barbarians in Civilization 1. And if you want to play my scenario, not this piece of junk that we're mucking around with, but my actual proper Barbarian scenario that I showed you in the first half of the video, um, then I'll be putting that online. I'll put a link to it in the video description. And uh, yeah, next video in this Barbarian series will be How to Play as the Barbarians in Civilization 2. Hope you guys uh, enjoy and yeah, check out my other Civ videos and how to play various Civ and colonization games in HD. Plus I plan to cover some of the amazing fan games and awesome total conversion mods out there, including some of my own that I've been working on. Uh, I'll see you next time. Bye!